understand the parts of a flower and how to look at the basic shapes and formations of the leaves. And these are really important concepts when you start thinking about how to identify plants. Flowers are the most important key into that identification because all of the evolutionary information comes in the flower because that's the reproductive part. So when you look at patterns in flowers, you see consistency in the different groups that allows us to identify them correctly. Leaves are so diverse and various, you can't really identify plants just based on their leaves, but it is helpful to know some basic terms of how to describe them and talk about them when we're doing this work. So the first thing to start with when you're looking at a flower is to identify the four whorls of the flower. So when we're looking at the four whorls, I've got some good examples that show all four whorls really clearly, but a lot of flowers have very different variations on these four whorls, and so you want to look closely and see how the different forms change. Here I found a flower that shows the four whorls really well. Some flowers are missing one or more of the four whorls, or some of the whorls are modified and look really strange. So just take a look at all the flowers you see and see if you can identify the four whorls, but know that sometimes they're missing. So the first whorl we want to look at is on the back of the flower, and that's the sepals. That's these green little flaps here on the back. And the sepals are what enclose the flower in bud. And here's a bud, and you can see all the green sepals are what's covering the bud. And then they, when the flower opens, they expand. And all together, when we're talking about the sepals all together, we call it the calyx. Next, we want to look at the showy whorl of the flower, and these are the petals. And if we want to talk about the petals all together, we call them the corolla. And when I pull the petals off, I'm going to expose the hidden sexual organs. So the next whorl of the flower is the male whorl. And that's these little bits right here and they're all in a circle around here. And the male whorl is called the stamen. This whole thing is called the stamen. And the stamen has two parts, the filament, which is the stalk of the stamen, and the anther, which is this orange part here, and that's where the pollen comes out of. So the stamen is made up of the filament and the anther. So let's see, if I take the stamens off, then I reveal in the position of honor, in the center, this is the female whorl. And the female whorl is called the pistil. That's the whole thing is called the pistil. And the pistil is made up of three parts. It has the stigma on top, the style, and the ovary at the bottom. The stigma is the part that is all sticky and receptive, and that's where the pollen lands on. And then the pollen travels down this tube to reach the ovary. And the ovary is what hold the seeds inside. And then the seeds get fertilized, and the whole ovary swells up into what's going to be a fruit. All plants that have flowers are also going to have fruit. This flower has three stigmas and styles, but one ovary. Each flower will have a different arrangement of sepals, petals, stamens, and pistils, and different numbers, different combinations. Sometimes they'll be fused together, sometimes they'll be separate. Let's take apart another flower and see what the four worlds have here. So here's the sepals on the outside, and then the corolla in this case is so showy, and the corolla is all fused into one. That's unique. So the petals just form one tube. So if I take that apart, oh, beautiful. Look at that inside. Here we have five stamens, three over here and two there. And they've got beautiful um, little filamentous hairs at the base of them. And then here in the center is our pistil, 
with the stigma on top and the style and the ovary in this case is rather small but there it's that slight bulge down there at the bottom. There's two kinds of leaves, simple and compound. This is an example of a simple leaf, which just means there's just one leaf attached to a stem. And when you're looking to tell what's a leaf, you want to look at the base and see if there's a node there. And see, you can see at the base of this leaf, there's a little, uh, there's a little bud. And this is the next year's growth that's going to happen. So at the base of every leaf, there should be a little bud or node something that you can tell is the bottom of the leaf. So if you don't have a simple leaf, then you have a compound leaf. This is a compound leaf, and you can tell because it has, here's the base of the leaf where you see the bud sticking out um, next to the twig. And then it has one main central axis here, and there's little leaflets sticking out on the side. So this compound leaf means that the, the single one leaf is divided into many little leaflets. This is an example of a double compound leaf. So we have one main axis here, and then it's splitting off uh, into secondary axes, and then there's little leaflets coming off of those. So this entire thing from here all the way down to here is one leaf. And I can tell that because I see the node at the bottom of the stem. And also, I know that each branch, as it's growing, each twig, next year it's going to want to build growth on the end. And so if I look at the, at the end of the twig, I'm looking for a little bud where that twig can extend next year and keep getting bigger. And this one doesn't have any bud. So I know that this has to be a leaf and not a twig. So these leaves are opposite. They're opposite from each other. We're talking about the arrangement of the leaf on the stem. So here's the main stem, one leaf, two leaves, and they're coming out at the same node on the stem, right across from each other. So we say they're opposite from each other. When we're talking about the arrangement on the stem, we see that these leaves are alternate. As you go up, there's one on one side and then a little break and one on the other side. So these leaves are alternating sides of the stem. So let's look at the margins of some leaves. Here we have what we call an entire leaf. An entire means that the margins or the outside is totally smooth when you look at it. And this is an example of a, a leaf that has teeth. On the edge, there's like these little serrations that look like little teeth all the way around the margins. So then if we look at this leaf, we see that the margins are deeply lobed or cleft and then even uh, there's smaller little serrations or teeth besides that big lobing. Here's another common leaf shape, beautiful, the shape of a heart. We call this chordate. Chordate means heart-shaped. Look, and some leaves are really, really big. Like this palm frond is one entire leaf all the way up to the top. Wow. Here's another example of a modified leaf that these ones are all small and needle-like. They've got a leathery coating and they're skinny and pointy. So this is what you would call a needle-like leaf. And a lot of conifers have this kind of leaf. Thanks for joining me out here in the wild green world. And I hope to see you next time.